So good morning, Fountain of Life. I welcome you in the lovely name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we bow our heads and uh, just invite the Lord to come and dwell amongst us. Heavenly Father, you are an awesome God and we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that we can come and that we can uh, be in your presence, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are forever near, that you're there to comfort us, that you are there to lift us up and empower us for the things that we are to do for the Almighty God here on earth. Lord, we pray that this morning, Lord, as we, we start to enter into your very throne room with praises and, and worship to you, Lord, that we will feel your very presence, Lord. And Lord, that it will touch each and every one this morning. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. And start off and we're going to sing 10,000 reasons. Um, 10,000 reasons why, what you call it, we can say thank you to the Lord and all the good things that he has done for us. Thank you, Daniel.
Christ alone, my hope is found. What a wonderful thing for us as believers to know that in Christ alone, that's where our hope is. I hope you enjoyed being in the presence of the Lord, and not that His presence has left, but just being able to worship Him this morning, just being able to to praise his name. I apologize that not all the words were there. And we will be working at that. And uh, getting that. Uh, so that it is not uh, that difficult to follow along. And to get into the very throne room of God. This morning I want to speak to you about. What is on my heart. And uh, there is a song about this as well. And. We haven't been able to find that, but we will. We will find it. And some of the part of the chorus of the song says that I can never be the same again. And this morning I want to speak to you a little bit about never being the same again. You know, when you listen to people's outcry these days and what most people are speaking about, is they're all saying that they want life to turn back to the normal they want to go back to as it was before. Yes, life for everyone has been disrupted, has been challenged and changed in the last year. And most people have this great hope that life will return to normal and very soon at that. Go back to what it was like before before COVID-19 and the pandemic. Looking at what has happened in the world today, we get the question that arises and says that, where is God in all this? Now I can assure you that God most definitely knows what's going on in the world and most definitely knows that the pandemic is taking place and that there's a virus out there which is causing great sickness and disease but it didn't come from God the virus and the pandemic are definitely meant for evil it's causing people to get seriously ill it's isolating people from each other it's destroying relationships it's causing mental illnesses suicide Depression, distancing loved ones from each other, causing major disruptions in people's lives and making most daily living things difficult and sometimes even impossible for certain people. But we have to take hope and know that God is in control and God knows all about this. And God said that He will supply all our needs according to His riches and glory. He has also promised us that whatever was meant for evil, He will turn around for good. So what good comes from this evil? What good is coming out of this time of pandemic? I think we have to look a little bit further beyond than our just daily living and the sacrifices we have to make. The things we have to endure because of COVID-19. I believe that God has opened a way for the body of Christ to bring the gospel to all the nations. Even the nations where 
Christians have been refused entry into countries where Christians have been greatly persecuted. Doors have been opened for people to bring the gospel. And maybe not people to go there physically and bring the gospel, but the gospel through the social media is now widespread. There's so many reports of, of people in countries which beforehand never knew about the Lord Jesus Christ just saying, we had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. We saw this on social media, speaking about the wonderful things that the Lord Jesus Christ does and that He loves us and that He cares for us and that we are not shunned and that we, that we have a right to call upon His name and, and come and be part of His kingdom. The willingness for people to go and to look on social media upon the word being preached out there. The willingness that people have to go and seek for spiritual answers. And they're receiving that because of what you call it, what has happened to the church in this time of COVID. The new networking, the new kind of preaching, the new evangelists going on throughout the world going on digitally. I also believe that God has opened a way for people who beforehand saw the church as a threat to them, saw, saw the church as, as a place where they will judge you and that people have said ideas and you have to change. If you, if you don't change and conform to that way that they are thinking, then you're not welcome. They've been intimidated by the church, intimidated by believers, are now listening to the Word of God. In their own living rooms, they, they're sitting at home or in their vehicles and, and, and being able to listen to the Word of God being preached without that stigma, without that fear, without people looking at them and trying to point a finger at them. I certainly know that the barriers that were up before, the strongholds that were in place over the nations prohibiting the gospel to go forth have been broken down by the Spirit of the Lord. Because the teaching and the preaching of His Word is now getting through to these people. I also know that it has caused us as believers to draw closer to the Lord. It has brought us to a point of realizing that, that we, that's all we have is that our hope is just in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our hope cannot be put on the things of man, on the things of this world. Because of all the restrictions that are taking place and the, the bylaws of saying that, <coughs> excuse me, that we can't gather together as believers, we've come to realize that we can still be in the presence of God. We can still have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. We can still speak to Him. And He hears us and He answers us. And nothing can stop us from serving our God. Many people are saying that they are tired and uh, they are bored and they have nothing to do. Can't go anywhere. They have lots of time on their hand. I think that's a great blessing, church. Great opportunity for us to spend more time in the presence of the Almighty God. Building greater relationships with Him. I know that it's also made many people more aware of the importance of knowing God. The fear-mongering that has gone around was still going around. has solidified our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing that our hope and our future is secure. A glorious future with the Lord Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter what takes place here on earth. The fear of death and the grave been removed. Because of our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's given us that firm foundation to stand on. And to face everything that every day can bring to us. Even the uncertainties and the troubles we so often see. It's 
So I can truly say, how can I ever be the same again? Even if COVID-19 disappears. Even because of the vaccination, we're able to go back to what the world calls something normal. I can truly say that because of this pandemic, because of this time, I will never be the same again. The pressures my faith has experienced, and I believe that many believers' faith has experienced, has brought us to a point of saying the refiner's fire has been working in us. And what is coming out is more pure. We have been transformed more and have become more like Christ. And I'm thinking of this, just a, just a reminder comes to me of, of what happened to Jesus' disciples after his crucifixion. How easily and how quickly a number of his disciples returned to doing what they had done before they met with Jesus. Before he called them to come and be fishers of men, they went back to go fish for fish. In John chapter 21, you get that story. Story of Peter going back and getting a bunch of the disciples to come with him. And they're out there fishing, but they're not catching any fish. But they, they've gone back. They've been given the great commission by the Lord Jesus Christ. They were given clear instruction to go to Jerusalem and wait for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to come upon them. They'd gone back and started fishing again. Gone back to the normal life they knew before they knew Jesus. And then Jesus appears to them. Tells them to put the net in on the other side. And all of a sudden the net is overflowing with fish. They get back to the shore. And they have another great encounter with the Lord Jesus. And Jesus asks Peter the question and he says to him, Do you love me more than these? And you know when Peter answered yes, Jesus says to him, feed my sheep. It's easy for us to say we love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have saved me. That my hope, my future is with you, that I have everlasting life. But the real test will come when he asks you to serve him. See, Peter had just repented because he'd been confronted by people and he denied the Lord Jesus. And yeah, once again, Jesus is asking him to commit his life to him. Peter's life is instantly changed when he finally realizes who Jesus is again. The risen Christ. Peter's life was changed, church. His occupation changed. From a fisherman, he became an evangelist. His identity changed from impetus to the rock. His relationship with Jesus changed. He was forgiven. Peter had to face the true feelings and motives. And he was transformed when Jesus confronted him because of his motives. And this morning I believe that the Lord is saying to us as believers. Can you imagine Jesus standing before you and asking you, do you love me? Do you really love me? Analyze what's going on, what you're thinking of. You know that he knows even your thoughts. He knows what's going on in your heart. But do you?
My prayer, my hope for you is that you will respond just like David did in Psalm 27 verse 4. He says there in verse 4, he says, The one thing I ask, Lord, the thing I seek most, that which I want the most, that which I seek the most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in His temple. Jesus is asking, do you love me? Is that what you're really seeking? To being in His presence? To be in His presence not just for a short little time every day or, or, or just at church or just on a Sunday. But to be and dwell in the presence of the Lord 24-7. You know, that's what the everlasting life is. When we die and we go to heaven, we're going to be in the presence of the Lord 24-7. So you might as well get used to that. Here on earth, dwelling in the presence of God. Dwelling in the presence of God, church, is also dwelling in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I believe the Holy Spirit is saying to you this morning, are you crying out for me? Are you crying out for my presence? Are you crying out for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon your life? To be baptized once again in the Holy Spirit. Just as the disciples of Jesus needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit mentioned in the book of Acts, so we do need that baptism, church. So do we need that baptism, not for a once-off. Maybe say, I've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's wonderful. But it's something that we need to desire on and on and on. To be continually baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the reason why we need this is because we are people that will pass on what Christ has given to us. He's given us all power and authority, church. And unless we are set on fire, we become cold and lukewarm. And the Bible speaks about that in saying that if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out. Reject you. He wants us to be on fire for Him. And it seems like in this time of COVID-19 and the pandemic, we've grown cold as the church. It's time to awaken and, and let the fire of God come back into our lives. The fire of God come back into to, to us and say that we're still on board. We're still part of the body of Christ. We still long to be in the presence of the Holy One. To bow down before Him. We want to be seated in those heavenly places. We want to be in your throne room with you, Lord. You see, because the person who passes through that ordination goes forth with a number of things in his life. And we need those things in our lives. The first thing that the Holy Spirit will do to you, church, is put you on fresh feet. You'll freshen up your feet. And when he does that, you're going to be able to fulfill the Great Commission. You see, because in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15, he speaks about that. The preparation of the gospel. Jesus spoke about that to Peter. He said, go and feed my sheep. Don't go fish. Catch fish. Go fish for men. I made you a fisher of men. Go and fish them and go feed them. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15 says, For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news. So that you will be fully prepared. See, the Holy Spirit comes, church, to prepare us. 
Other translations say, put on, put on those feet. Put on those shoes. Spread the good news. The gospel of truth. The Holy Spirit who fully prepares us. Receiving the power from above. You see, an encounter with the Holy Spirit will equip us, church. Will equip us with a fresh voice. And speaking the utterances of the Holy Spirit. We find that in the book of Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 says this, And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. Church, they were people who were waiting for the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord. They were His disciples. You and me as believers are His disciples. He's told us that everyone present will be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will change the tongue that you speak will give you a fresh voice. It's not always about speaking in a different language. Will give you utterances from God Himself. It says there in Acts chapter 2 verse 4, And the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. The Holy Spirit can give us that ability too, church. God's presence is available for every believer. God's anointing is there for each and every one of us. You know, when you think of that, how can you ever be the same again? You have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. You have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. You get filled with the Holy Spirit. How can you ever be the same again? Listen to these two scriptures. Hebrews chapter 8. Verse 10. But this is the new covenant I will make. With the people of Israel on that day says the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds. And will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. You know, the Lord Jesus said, I've come and I've made a new covenant with you. You as believers, you that have accepted me as Lord and Savior. I've made a new covenant with you. And this new covenant will put the laws in our minds. And it will write them on our heart. So this new covenant is God's law inside of us now it is no longer an external rule or principle to live by the Holy Spirit reminds us of Christ's words it activates our conscience and influences our motives and our desires old things have passed away church all things have become new. Even a new covenant with the Lord. How can we ever be the same again? It makes us want to obey this Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us new desires and helps us to want to listen to God. With a new heart. With a new capacity of serving Him. And serving Him with great joy. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, he says this to us, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life has gone, and a new life has begun. You belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, church. I don't think life can ever go back to what is normal. I think it says there, the old life has gone. 
And a new life has begun. You see, because of our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ, we've been given a new and a fresh vision. We see things differently. When we read His Word, it comes to life for us. The Holy Spirit brings this new life, church. He brings us the revelation truth. As believers, we just haven't turned a new leaf and turned the leaf over a bit. We've actually began a new life. We still keep our individuality, but we have changed. And I can go further and I can tell you that not only have we changed, but creation is being changed. This new covenant this new perspective brings a new body, brings a new church. And all creation is being renewed. This is not a superficial change that will be quickly supersided by the next novelty. This is an entirely new order under Christ's authority. It requires us to look at things in a new way, to look at people in a different way, to look at all creation in a different way, to get a new perspective on our lives. A brother in Christ wrote this last week and posted it. His name is Mario Murillo. He said that God has commanded us to seek a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And we dare not have church without it. We dare not utter another word from the pulpit that denies it. And he goes on and he says the word of the Lord for this hour. For now is to cry out to God with a heart of gratitude for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Church, I know that the Holy Spirit has been speaking to me and I know that He's been speaking to you this morning. I want to pray for you that you will also cry out to God with a heart of gratitude. You know, Jesus made us that promise and He said, I'm leaving, but I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. To refuse the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on your life. saying no thank you to the gift that God has given us. You know, he commanded his disciples and said, you go wait in Jerusalem for that outpouring. And they did. They waited for that outpouring of the Spirit. I pray the Holy Spirit is touching you, your conscience this morning and saying, I want to obey that commandment too. I want that outpouring of the Holy Spirit to be upon me. That fresh, that fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit needed for this hour, for this day, for this time when everything seems to be in chaos and in a mess when there doesn't seem to be much hope around that the Spirit of God come and ignite us again draw us closer to Him that we can truly say I will never be the same again because I'm a child of God
and I want all the things that he has in store for me because I know those are the things that are good good for me I close with this scripture in Romans chapter 12 verse 21 tells us, it says, don't let evil conquer you. Don't let the things that's going on in this world, the things of evil, conquer you, church. But you, but I, but the church, conquer evil by doing good. Don't let us long to go back to what it was like before. Let us cry out to the Lord for a fresh outpouring of His Holy Spirit and accept that we can never be the same again. That we will be changed by the Holy Spirit. God bless you all. I pray you have a wonderful week. And I know that God is with you. He said that. He promised us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. We pray a benediction this morning. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen.